flight started on a beautiful sunny day, March 10th, 2019. It was turning into a long flight. By the time we got to Denver, my suspicions had been completely aroused because I was rereading the same five articles that my phone was able to catch mid-flight. Important things like the secret societies and their influence in these parts of the country. Over and over again, I read this. We're in Denver. This is Scott and our first time in Denver together, and it's great. The cuisine in Denver was fantastic. I ate a splendid chicken sandwich. We're having a blast in a rock and roll Austin. As we descended upon Austin that night, I thought of the various artists and festival goers that had joined us in Denver and delayed our flight. Were we going to be in the same places? Would Scott and I mix sound for some of these artists? A squirrel, perhaps? Did they happen to see any secret or satanic symbols at the airport? We landed deep in the heart of Texas. And it was finally time to get our car. Hey honey, we just got into Austin. We're uh, getting our car. We headed out to Bastrop. But before we could reach Bastrop, Texas, Scott had a little pit stop in mind before hitting the hotel. There's a yellow rose in Texas that I am gonna see. Nobody else could miss her. That's right, Bucky's. I've never seen so many different and various proud displays of meat in one place. Oh, the jerky. The turkey. She's the sweetest little rosebud that Texas ever knew. Her eyes are bright as diamonds. They spark the life to do. I had always dreamed of going to Austin. Now was finally my chance. The city was amazing. So much character and history, I could see why it gets compared to Portland a lot. But I soon detected tension within the ranks. Despite all of our previous journeys together, I'd never been in Texas with Scott before. How would this go? Would I measure up to the rigor he expected of me? See, this is all the weird historic shit, man. Uh -huh. I want to go in there. We are boss. Sometimes Scott and I don't really communicate our feelings verbally. Setup went very well as we settled into our venue at the Clive Bar in Austin. The staff was wonderful and very courteous. This guy was really our only live musical act for the day. But when he jumped into the crowd, I thought for sure he'd broken his leg. Oh, to be young again. was a wild one. Lots of big name celebrities. 
throughout it all, the eye, this damned all-seeing eye was popping up everywhere. Maybe it was a lack of sleep, but it felt as though we were being watched. The music was fantastic all week long. With all of the noise and yelling, Scott had already begun to lose his voice. We're in the car with Super Dave Osborne. He's going to take us through his stunt routine. Super Dave, it's all you. Okay, Jeff, I'd just like to show you a little stunt that I, I've been working on. <laughs> oh, shit! The morning had arrived with an overnight rainstorm. I remember putting this tarp over our microphones, thinking how clear the sky was. Luckily, as a native Oregonian, I had seen this kind of fake out before. The gear survived and the show continued unabated. It is why a tarp is always the weapon of choice in every good sound guy's arsenal. many new faces and worked with outstanding bright new stars. Sixth Street, Austin, South by Southwest, the nighttime. We were there on the ground streaming live. Hi, uh, Jeff Dodge here with the Peasant Revolution Band Variety Hour. I'm here with uh, Scott Peterson, premier sound engineer. Uh, we're here in the, he's a professional, don't worry. And we, we're on 6th Street. We are at South by Southwest, we're on 6th Street. Uh, we have we have a friend here. I think I'm seeing things, I might be drunk. Am I drunk? No, oh, it's, it's another pink elephant. You're looking good, You're looking good. To know some of the local lore, I was reminded how often the owl is a part of this secret society stuff. It was then that I noticed the shape of a building. It was an owl building. An all-seeing owl eye type of thing. A monument to secret flight, perhaps. Steady. Be calm. 
I wasn't completely sure how much Scott knew. And uh, and we're here on 6th Street. Uh, Scott is running, he's running away. I see the Owl yeah, Building. There's down. a lot of uh, some comments coming in. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of Illuminati stuff out here. It's very strange. Anyway, we'll try and check in later. Thanks, I'll uh, check out these comments when I have a chance.
on the Ritz, a little bit of Ritz. Whoa, we got some watchers, yay. Thanks for watching. Yeah, it's fascinating. I've never been here to Austin. I, I thought about moving here. It, what a party and, and very, very well policed it looks like. Uh, Lots of characters, lots of young ones that I don't understand how they can afford to be here, but you know, God bless them. the South preserves so much of their history and their buildings and architecture. This is the risk.
things wrapped up, we settled into a field trip to LaGrange, Texas. That's right, in quest of the origins of the classic ZZ Top song. As we were walking around the town, looking for signs of ZZ Top or any other kind of clues, we discovered the Fallen Heroes Museum of LaGrange, Texas. Huh, that's an interesting marker there. We were greeted by the hospitality of Charlie and the wonderful charm of seeing one of the county's oldest jails. Charlie told us some grand old stories. We got to see how they jailed people in the 1880s, and Scott even got to visit the drunk tank. We went there in search of the world's greatest barbecue. Things were wonderful. I love Texas. It's a big state in a big country, and uh, I will always treasure our days at the South by Southwest Music Festival 2019. To all of those that we met and got to work with, thank you very much for the experience. Portland. Shit. We'll never forget those days of our youth. Ah, Christ. Whoever does. Wait, I think I, that's from something. Is that a uh, Dreyfus say that? I, anyway, it's, it's so hard for me to conclude these voiceover narrations in a succinct way of any form, but 